And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we've got more Cavs drama. Obviously, like this is like the most popular story going on aside from the playoffs because we have no idea what the Cavs want. The Cavs have no idea what they want. And we have no idea what's wrong with Darius Garland or Donovan Mitchell or Jared Allen or the rest of the squad. Like, everything is a mystery with this Cavs team right now, and I have no idea what to believe. It's, like, this is, again, I say this several times, this is the most, I've never talked about the Cavs more than, um, than now. Like, I mean, even when they had LeBron James, I never talked about them as much. Like, this is about, like, this is about as much as I would talk about them like, as if LeBron James was actually on the team, because, you know, there was a lot of drama talking, going into, like, LeBron and his free agency in, uh, in the 2010s, and then LeBron and his free agency in 2018, like, there's, there was just a lot of talk about LeBron on the Cavs, and ugh, these allergies are not being kind to me, so here we have, now we have more intel on the, um, what the Cavs actually want to do. Like, we've been talking about what the players wanted to do, and instead, we haven't really talked about, like, what the Cavs have decided or what they want to do with their two-star guards, and whether or not they're going to cater to them and decide, okay, well, we'll pick one or the other. But it doesn't seem like they want to do either. Neither, actually, excuse me, because this is, this is an article from Bleacher Report, and this is like, it says that this is a rumor, so again, we have no idea whether it's true or not. Again, this is just regular Cavs drama, because like, we have no idea what's true and what's not true. So, the Cavs reportedly aren't actively looking to trade their, um, their two guards. It doesn't seem like they want to, at least according to this article, and, um... The reasoning, the reason being because those two teams, those two players, while we don't know exactly like their relationship status and why they like, why they, um, Garland wants to even be traded in the first place, it doesn't seem like the Cavs are that bitter of losing in the, in the second round to the Boston Celtics due to their injuries. Now, again, there is, I guess that's sort of like the reason why they aren't um, they don't want to get rid of them because if you think about it, if the team was healthy, maybe they could have put up a better fight. And that might be what the Cavs are thinking. And they're thinking, okay, well, we shouldn't get rid of them just because they, they were injured and it would be unfair, which makes a little bit of sense. But according to Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports, the Cavs don't appear very motivated to listen to offers on any of their core four, which is Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Jarrett Allen, and Evan Mobley. Now, with the group leading the way, Cleveland they secured the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference this season with a 48 and 34 record. They beat the Orlando Magic in the first round of the playoffs, and they fell to the Eastern Conference um, champion Boston Celtics due to injuries in the second round. So there's growing talks that again they just don't want to um they just don't want to move their core their young players or any of those um main four guys on the team. Now, I don't really feel like I agree with this stance. I feel like I mean if those if one of those players if they want to be traded, then Keeping them on the same team is only going to hurt the chemistry of the team because it's like you're essentially forcing uh, Garland to play in a situation that you don't want to, that he doesn't want to be in. It would be, it would be similar to the situation with, um, dare I say, Ben Simmons, and when he when he was on the 76ers. If you guys remember when before he got traded to the Brooklyn Nets, he decided to sit out intentionally sit out in practice and intentionally sit out in games and he never wanted to play for philly ever again but philly didn't trade him immediately so as i guess a form of protest he just decided to not play a single game and he just kept getting fined he kept getting fined all the money from his contract but eventually they gave in and they decided to trade him so I don't really think that any of those players are going to pull that stunt. 
But I also don't think that any of those players are going to play 100% in a situation that they don't like. Now, this also, Vince Carter somewhat did the exact same thing. Now, he was on the Toronto Raptors at one point, and he started to regress. So, as a result of his regression, he then decided to, the, the Raptors decided to trade him. Now, he wanted to get out of the Raptors situation anyway, and that was, it turns out later on when he joined the Nets, that was exactly the reason why he was playing that badly, because he didn't want to be in that situation. I'm going to go ahead and pull up um, the numbers right now. Vince Carter's stats. Also, who do you think would win in a dunk contest, Vince Carter or Michael Jordan? I think Vince Carter would give Michael Jordan a challenge, and I think he would end up winning. So looking at the stats for... <clears throat> looking at the stats for uh, Vince Carter, he was averaging... 20 points per game in 2003 then he was averaging 22 in 2004 when he was on toronto but now these aren't bad but in 2001 he was averaging 27 points per game so he went from averaging 27 to averaging 20 and then the second he goes to new now in 2005 this was the real game changer now he played in 20 games and started in 20 of them. In those 20 games with Toronto, he was averaging only 15 points. And then he gets traded. Now, the second he goes to New Jersey and plays for the Nets, he averages 27 points. So he went from averaging 15 points in the 20 games and then averaging 24 points in the previous season to going to average 27 points when he was playing on the Nets and shooting 81% from the free throw line, shooting 40, um, hold on a second, shooting 42% from three, and 46% from the field. Like, that is, an, that is a huge jump in production, and there's a possibility that either one of those guards, if they're not happy with the situation that they're in in Cleveland, it could be either Garland, or it could be Donovan Mitchell, or it could be, I have no idea who, which one of those two guards it could be, but if... For if the speculations that Garland isn't happy with the situation in Cleveland, if they are true, he might end up not playing to, like at his very best, which would hurt the team and force them to trade him anyway, and possibly at a little bit of a weaker price, given how if you know he's playing bad, then like you know the price of his trade is going to drop a little bit more because like the value of the trade is only going to be as much as the player is worth. So if he's playing really bad, he's going to be dropping his value even more. And again, it's just not an ideal situation for the Cavs to really be in. And I mean, it could, I mean, maybe they could work it out, but I, I, I don't really see that happening if these um, allegations are true or if these, um, you know, if the, these theories are true and Darius Garland really doesn't like the situation in Cleveland right now. Because, you know, we see this all the time where it's like the second option isn't happy with being the second option. And unfortunately, it, even if they're winning, even if they're winning, they might just say, okay, I want to leave. Now, we talked about the two main guards. Now we can talk about, I mean, the fact that they're not willing to move Jarrett Allen is a little bit surprising to me because he's been, he's disappointed this franchise, not one, but two different times in the postseason. Like, last year when he was when he played against the New York Knicks in the first round the quote lights were too bright against the Knicks and he did not play well at all in that series and he was the main reason why the Cavs lost in five and in this playoff series now he's been the main reason why the Cavs lost in five yet again because he just didn't he just decided not to play in any of the Boston Celtics games in this series now Again, he did have an injury like with his um like with his ribs and he did like but he was also prescribed or like he was able to get a painkiller to that would allow him to play, but he just chose not to take it for whatever reason even though they like, you know, they suggested it to him. He was just like, mm, "No, I don't really feel like it." 
And if you have the option to play a game, like imagine if this was Kobe refusing to play a game, if he was given the option, like Kobe would never miss a playoff game. Even if he needed to play through a broken hand, he would play, he would play through it. And he's played through broken fingers before. So with that in mind, I definitely think Kobe would have taken this painkiller and would have decided to suit up and play this game, which is, again, it's really disappointing to me that Jarrett Allen decided not to do so. And with that, that's basically all the Cavs drama that I have for you today. Let me know in the comments if you think that this duo should be broken up or this duo should stay together. I think they should be broken up and the Cavs should stick with Donovan Mitchell. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. So with that, we are out of time for this fourth segment. So now we will go ahead and go into the fifth segment where I give a finals preview of the Mavericks against the Celtics, so stay tuned right after this short break.